All right, so today we did some activities with the polarized light filter and mirrors and lenses, and hopefully that gives you enough experience to understand what these notes are about today. Before we get to the mirrors and lenses section, I do want to talk about different types of materials and how they reflect light, because every material um, has some interaction with light, whether they reflect all of it or let some of it through or let all of it through. So we'll get some vocabulary about that right now. The first type of material is called opaque. You may have heard of this before when talking about different colors. And any opaque material is something that reflects or absorbs the light that strikes it. So it reflects all of the light and it, it might give us certain colors or if it absorbs the light, we end up with darker colors. And we'll discuss how all that works a little bit next week. Um, the fact is with opaque, that means that light cannot pass through it. And so because it can't pass through, we're not able to see through it on the other side. So examples would be, you know, anything that you can look around at right now and, and notice that you cannot see through it. It's not invisible. It's not transparent. So my examples that I wrote down were wood and metal, cotton, wool. You can write down more specific things in the room around you or you can write down mine. Um, it's up to you. Transparent is on the opposite side of that spectrum. So opaque didn't allow any light through it. Transparent allows light through it or it transmits light. That means it allows it to pass through so that there is no reflection. You can see exactly what's on the other side. Examples of this would be windows made of clear glass. Um, a lot of times like clean water is going to be transparent. Air is transparent, like I can see through it when I'm looking at other things. Or if you have classrooms that use an overhead projector, a lot of times a teacher might use this clear sheet to either write on or they'll have things printed on it, and that's called a transparency. And that comes from that root word. There is a little bit of in-between with these materials, though, and that's called translucent. This is the type of material that light lets some light pass through it, but as it's going through, it ends up getting scattered in different directions. So we still don't have reflection. You're not going to see color from it, but you can see some objects through it. The problem is that it's not very clear. So if you've ever noticed the window that's in my room next to the periodic table chart, and if you haven't noticed before, look for it tomorrow, there's a... a window that I have a lot of pictures posted up on and that window has been buffed so it's not completely see-through anymore so you don't you're not so distracted during class um, but it's very similar to types of showers that have frosted glass so you can't see inside it's like a privacy thing um, there's also wax paper that you might use in baking that is Again, it's waxy looking so it's not completely see-through but you can you can at least make out shapes on the other side of it now today in our lab, we spent time looking at different types of mirrors, so this should all be a review. A plain mirror is a flat mirror that forms an image. That image is always right side up. The image is always the same size as the real object, and it's always the same distance away from the mirror as the real object. So the image you're seeing appears to be the same distance away from the mirror itself than you are. The concave mirror is the one that curved inward, and this one formed images depending on where you were holding it or where the object's position is. So the further away the object is, you saw an upside down image and it was smaller. It was kind of hard to like find yourself, so it was like looking at the inside of a spoon. And the closer it got to you, it would get a little bit bigger. The image was still upside down. And then finally, when it was really close, the image was right side up and larger. And an example of that would be like using a makeup mirror. For a convex mirror, this one curves outward, and it forms images that are always right side up. They appear smaller and farther away than they really are, and this is why we use that example of the passenger side mirror on cars. And you notice they always say, objects in mirror are closer than they appear, and that's just to let the driver know that even though it might look like there's a safe distance for them to get into another lane, they want to check over their shoulder anyway because that mirror allows them to see a wider range of things around them, but not necessarily understand the distance for their judgment. Now for refraction, we had two different types of lenses. One was called concave, and this lens curves inward, and so that way it feels thinner in the center than at the edges, and it creates an image that spreads light outward. So it produces an image that's always upright. So those, those rays of light on the other side of the lens never meet. So that's why it's always going to be um, the right side up. 
the other type of lens is called convex. And this one is thicker in the center than at the edges. And so because of this, as the rays of light go into the lens, they end up being focused all towards one point. Um, and eventually, once they connect, they'll end up flipping over as the rays of light continue to move. So the farther away the object is, it makes the image upside down, and it's smaller. And as you move it closer to your eye, the image gets um, a little bit bigger, but it still stays upside down. Finally, when it's really close to your eye, the image is upright and it's large. Today, you saw that it was kind of blurry, too. Tomorrow in class, when we open up, we're going to finish talking about our lab and, and look at some pictures of these light diagrams, figure out exactly what's going on with these light rays, and figure out why it is some of these images are upside down versus being right side up. And once we're done talking about that, we'll get into our quiz. So be sure you study your notes on light waves and how they interact with each other and how they behave. And I will see you tomorrow.